WWE 2K18 for Nintendo Switch was the first WWE video game to grace a Nintendo system since WWE 13 for the original Wii back in 2012. And for a couple years, it was the most recent WWE game that I've played before WWE 2K15 hit Steam eventually, and I bought that because it had all the DLC included and it was cheap. And I kept buying these games when they were cheap, until 2K19 due to the fact that, well, I don't spend that much time playing these WWE games as I did when I was younger. And when I do play these games, the experience is almost never pleasant due to the stale gameplay, some annoying minigames for simplest functions in wrestling, and some modes that I enjoyed in past games being turned into something more convoluted and less intuitive. So WWE 2K18 wasn't necessarily on my radar even with all the reviews, but then lo and behold, it was on sale for cheap, with all the DLC and I figured, why not, if nothing else, it'd make for some fun video fodder. So here we are. My first experience starting this game is reading a prompt letting me know that online features of 2K18 are no longer available. At first I found it funny that a game would be so bad they already abandoned the online features, but then I remember this is essentially an annual sports release, and doing this is a way to entice players to get the most recent version for all the cool stuff online. Since I don't give two shits about online play, I don't bite, and we move on. So when the WWE 2K18 title screen loads up, I notice the camera moving slightly slower than usual compared to the PC title screen. A slight difference and honestly didn't think much of it afterwards, but when I loaded up a singles match, this is where things started to fall apart. Entrances start and everything is running at half speed. The entrances in these WWE games, which can be skipped if desired, are already long enough running normally, so having these run very slowly on the Switch is even more of a sloth. But from a purely presentation standpoint, the low frame rate messes up the timing of the more elaborate entrances, such as Demon Finn Balor or Undertaker that rely on musical cues to do their thing. And the music plays normally while everything else is moving in molasses, which is not a good start to this video game. And then the basic one-on-one -on -one match begins and it runs very slowly. Timing is off on reversals because of the slow speed of the action. Controls have a slight lag to them, which doesn't help much in moves and such. It's a rather lethargic sloth to play through this one match that normally wouldn't be such a thing on other games, let alone other platforms. And this is for a simple one-on-one -on -one wrestling match without any additional stipulations beyond this being a championship match. So I tried a more sophisticated match, an Elimination Chamber match where you have six wrestlers and a massive steel structure. The eight-man option is nowhere to be found in this version, which is probably a good idea, all things considered. So the load time is, well, slow. Naturally, for a match with more data, it's to be expected, but this feels much slower loading than it probably should be. And speaking of slow, this match... Oh boy, uh, you know what this is? This is akin to running a PC game on a much older computer that barely makes the minimum hardware requirements and you had to turn off a bunch of features to try and get the thing to run at a halfway playable level. That's WWE 2K18 on Switch in a nutshell. They ported the game with much higher hardware requirements to a console that could barely reach those requirements and had to reduce a bunch of settings in order to get it running at a supposed acceptable level if you want to call it that. That means the graphics taking a hit, making some of the superstars look cheap and plasticky looking, much like knockoff action figures. Some of the arenas look alright, the pyro isn't too bad all things considered. Look, I'm not going to complain about the visual presentation taking a hit. I'm used to subpar graphics on ports to lesser systems. It's to be expected, but even after all that, the game still runs like ass, with poor animation and an inconsistently poor frame rate, for the little things. Maybe if there was an option to have empty arena matches that might boost the performance a little, hell, it'd actually be an overall improvement. Meanwhile, I feel compelled to remind people that WWE 13 on the Nintendo Wii looked considerably worse than its PS3 and Xbox 360 counterparts, and yet it ran smoothly still and played great. What makes this whole thing really sad is that a lot of the components from the proper versions made the cut. You have the universe mode, which gets more convoluted and cumbersome as the years go on, but it's there. Multitude of match types to play with, your Hell in a Cells, Elimination Chambers, Ladder Matches, Cage Matches, No Holds Barred, you could customize your matches if you wanted to. You have a career mode gimmick that I've tried for a short while before I fell asleep. 
You have your various creator wrestlers, create an entrance, create a finisher, create an arena, create a championship. All those things are there for the most part. As far as the modes and features in the sandbox, it's almost as quantitative as the bigger versions, save for only six players as opposed to eight, somewhat longer, almost glacial load times. There might be a couple other emissions here or there that I might have overlooked, but on a whole, you've got a bevy of options to play with. They seem fleshed out enough to keep you busy. Honestly, if it wasn't for the actual performance of the gameplay, this would have had the makings of a decent conversion of a WWE 2K video game onto the Switch, probably revived a, a segment of lower grade ports similar to the PS2 and Wii during the latter days of the old SmackDown vs Raw series. Sound-wise, it's the stock WWE package. Most, if not all, the wrestler entrances are here, along with some stock selections for the created wrestlers you produce. There's some licensed music that I turn off even if I'm not recording shit for videos because I just don't care for that stuff. The sound effects, crowd noise, occasional voice acting featured in the game is adequate. The commentary is still the drizzling shits, but what can you do? That's the standard we're working with in these WWE products. There's not much else to say in that regard. Once again, to reiterate, WWE 13 on the Nintendo Wii was not the prettiest looking game on there, but it did work, it was very playable, and I had a fun time with it as far as the content and the gameplay was concerned, despite being a limited version of what was on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 consoles. WWE 2K18 on the Switch, on the other hand, is a game that could have been worthwhile if it didn't run slower than Hulk Hogan in his 80s. And that's probably the only thing that hinders this gender of a game, because everything around the game is almost the total package. A lot of the stuff from the bigger consoles almost made the cut. If it weren't for the speed, this could have been a surefire hit for WWE fans wanting to take their sports entertainment on the go or something, but as it is, it just dropped the ball and misses the mark. But I guess in the very least, it's not 2K20. I don't know, is that still even a thing? Uh, maybe, I don't know, well, who cares, bye.